today, I'm going to show you how to create the Elixir of Life potion, perfect for the 20th anniversary of the Sorcerer's Stone. The things you'll need to create our Elixir of Life potion is one glass bottle, and I chose an oil and vinegar bottle. I'm going to put a link in the description to a very similar bottle to this. Um, this one was gifted to me, and when I went online to look for the exact same one, it was like $30 for a bottle. So I did find a set of two that's very similar um, for like $13. So I'm going to put that in the description. You could also use just any little handled bottle you can get from Michael's. Um, the dollar store carries a couple as well. So whatever kind of bottle you'd like to use, feel free. Um, I just thought that a pouring bottle would be appropriate since the elixir of life is supposed to be consumed on a regular basis. And this is something that they'd actually be using. We are going to use some rubbing alcohol, but you could also use distilled water and glycerin. We are going to use some gold leaf flakes and some tacky glue. We're going to use some liquid red food coloring as well as some gold mica powder. We are going to use some of the little brackets and clips to make um, earrings that will actually be able to help make a charm for us. We're going to use some little gold beads as well as some quartz rock charms. We are going to wrap our bottle with some hemp cording. We're going to use a red sharpie marker and a brown permanent marker. I'm going to be using a lighter or you could use a match, as well as a couple different paint brushes and a pair of pliers. And then we're going to use a hot glue gun with a red wax seal hot glue stick. And finally, our label printed on sticker paper and the link for this is in the description down below. Let's get started. Would you like a chance to win one of my potion bottles? Then consider supporting me over on Patreon. All of my patrons have a chance to win a monthly potion bottle. Link is in the description down below. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to actually gold leaf a couple sections of our bottle. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And just a little warning, if you have never used gold leaf flakes before, just be warned, they will go everywhere. So make sure you are doing this project somewhere that one, does not have a breeze. And two, if little gold flakes get everywhere, just know that you may need a vacuum cleaner or some adhesive tape. Actually, the lint rollers that you use for your clothes work really well to pick up little fragments of um, the gold leafing. But just know that uh, you may want to do this somewhere kind of confined and uh, somewhere that you don't mind getting a little messy or glittery with gold leafing. So to gold leaf part of our bottle today, we are going to use tacky glue. You could also use Mod Podge. You could use the actual gold leafing glue. I just find that the tacky glue works just as good, and you can pick tacky glue up at the dollar store. So even better. So to do this, all we're going to do is take a little bit of our tacky glue on a brush and we are going to gold leaf this little band right here. So all I'm going to do is put a very thin coating of the glue on that band and we're going to let it dry just a little bit, enough to get tacky so it's just not super wet. And then we're going to apply our gold leaf and then we're going to let it sit and dry completely and then we're going to brush it off and it'll give us a really great gold leaf effect, which I think is really cool for this potion because since the Sorcerer's Stone can turn any metal into gold, maybe this was a metal band on here that once it had the Elixir of Life in there, it just kind of turned it gold. So I thought we would add some little gold touches on here just to kind of give it a little bit of extra pizzazz and some of that gold that the Sorcerer's Stone has with it. And if you get it on any part of the bottle, don't worry about it. We're going to be wrapping that with some cording anyway, so it's going to get covered up, so it really doesn't matter. So this is already pretty tacky. We put a thin coat on here. So all we're going to do is take some of our gold leafing. Let me move this over here. Just so you guys know, this is a whole lot easier to do not on camera when you're trying to apply this from behind the camera outstretched in front of you. So we're just going to kind of put chunks of the gold leafing on here, press down, and then once we get that I just like to go back and just kind of either press with my fingers or press with a paintbrush onto our glued areas. And then we're going to let this sit just so then that way the glue can dry completely before we pull the excess flakes off of there. Now on this one, I kind of feel like maybe it was sitting on a metal table 
when the um, elixir of life was pulled from the sorcerer's stone. So I kind of want to do a random little gold leafing on the bottom of this that I feel like will look like, you know, it was turning the bottle gold where the metal was underneath of it. So similar to the band up here, I just thought it would be a fun little addition to kind of add some gold to the bottom of this as well. But for this one, we are not going to be as um, precise as that one. We're actually going to just do some like little brush ups in different patterns and different heights around the bottom of the bottle. And again, just real thin coats. And because the bottom of this is a little bit larger, um, work very quickly so that your glue doesn't over dry. If it does, you just go back and add more. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, so once we get that done, same thing. We're just gonna take our gold leafing and we are going to start to press it around the base of our bottle. So once we get that roughly pushed on, again, we're gonna let this sit and dry, and then we are going to brush the excess off. While our other gold leaf pieces are drying, I'm actually gonna add a little bit of a gold detail to our label as well. So I have printed my label off on sticker paper, just like I normally do. I went around the outside edge with a matching marker, and now I'm gonna take just a little bit of our tacky glue and I'm going to go around the outside edge just a little bit. And again, I'm not going to go in any particular fashion. I just kind of want it to be random. And then we're going to gold leaf it, let it dry, and brush it off. So that has a gold leaf effect as well. And again, I'm going to just let this sit and dry. And uh, we should be able to brush that off and get our really cool gold leaf effect. Okay, so while our label is drying, we're gonna go ahead and brush the excess off. Now, um, I use this brush all the time to brush off excess gold leafing, so it's just kind of my gold leafing brush, and it's just a nice round, stiffer brush that allows me to knock off the excess gold leafing when I am doing some gold leaf projects like my little um, chocolate frog gold leaf ornament bulbs. So I like to go through and just kind of do a rough brush off first. And as you can see, we already have a really cool effect. But now we can go back and start to really brush it off and it kind of pushes it in a little bit more and almost gives it more of a polished look. And I do still like to leave a little bit of the rough edge just so you know it's gold leafing and not just a gold marker. but it does give it a more refined look, which I really like. Now we do have a section here that doesn't look like it took, and that's okay, because we can just add a little bit more glue there and re-gold leaf that little section, and it'll be good. But we get a really awesome effect. So now we'll go ahead and brush off the bottom. Best part about brushing off gold leaf is you can reuse it, 100% of it. So brush it off, save it, you know, do it on a sheet of paper so you can kind of collect it. But um, like I said, it does have the potential to go everywhere. So just be really careful. And this is completely optional. I just thought it would add a really cool effect to our Elixir of Life potion. And it makes the Niffler in me super happy because who doesn't love shiny things? So again, I just did a rough brush off, but I love the effect we got on this. Giving us this rustic gold leaf vibe that when we have our potion in here is just going to look really, really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this little section and then we will brush off our label. Okay, so while I have that drying and I just ended up doing another coat all the way around just to make sure it's extra shiny. We will grab our little label here. Cool, and I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see this. 
we just got a really nice sporadic gold leafed edge, which I think is just going to add just a little bit of shimmer. And I really like how um, random it is. So I think that's cool. So I'll go ahead and brush this off now. All right, so as you can see, we got really great gold leafing on the bottom and on the top. And like I said, it doesn't matter if the gold leafing up here um, isn't perfect because we're gonna wrap up here with some twine anyway. So I, I think it's a really great touch. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on and do the rest of the bottle. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to create a sorcerer's stone bead. And to do that, I'm gonna use these little quartz beads that I got at Michael's and we're going to make it red so that it looks like a sorcerer's stone. Now, the easiest way to do that is to use a permanent marker like a Sharpie. Now, I did find that a Sharpie versus the red in a regular permanent marker did a lot better. I feel like it um, was a more vivid red, was a lot stronger, so I highly recommend a red Sharpie. And again, you can get them at the dollar store, so it's super affordable and Sharpies are amazing. They're one of my favorite things. I highly recommend to just use a Sharpie for this one because like I said, I did do some testing on a couple other ones and I just found that they didn't give a great color. So we're gonna go through and we are going to color this whole thing red. As you can see, I have gloves on and that's so that I don't make my hands all kinds of red, just off of a little bit of transfer until it dries. Um, and once it dries, it's good. It is a pretty permanent color effect on here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish coloring this in. Okay, so I just got done coloring in my little piece of quartz to make it a sorcerer's stone. And as you can see, it is a very bright red. Um, so that is why we have the brown marker here. And I like to use the broad tip. And we are just going to go over the whole thing with some brown. And it's going to darken up certain areas and just make it look a little bit more authentic and aged instead of such a bright vivid red so again we're just going to kind of go through here hit the whole thing with some brown and then once it dries you can always go back and highlight other areas with just a little bit more brown to darken it up even more but i find that this just does a really nice job of taking some of that like super bright red away. It's still definitely transparent, still has that beautiful red quality to it, but it just kind of makes it look a little bit more like the Sorcerer's Stone or the Philosopher's Stone that we see in the film. Okay, so as you can see, it just kind of darkened it up and made it look a little bit more aged. Now, you could definitely hit this with some glue and some gold leafing, to add some little specks of gold leaf to it, but I don't think we're gonna do that, and I'll show you what I mean. So I made my own Sorcerer's Stone a while back out of a chunk of clear glass that I found at Michael's. And all I did then was hit some of these sections with a little bit of glue and gold leafing to just make it look like the gold was trying to basically come out of the little sorcerer's stone. Now, obviously, this is not a little sorcerer's stone. It's quite big. However, I love it. I think it's just perfect. It's super um, natural looking. You know, it's not like a super defined shape, but I think it's a really great little sorcerer's stone prop. And uh, it just makes for a nice little addition to my collection, but I like the little bit of gold leafing on there. So you could definitely do that with this one, but because we have so much gold leafing on our bottle, I don't feel like it's necessary on this, but I'm gonna show you how we're then going to make this a charm that we are gonna be able to hang off of our bottle. And by the way, this is why I wear gloves, because as you can see, all of that would be on my hands right now. To make our quartz bead, or now sorcerer's stone, into a charm, we're gonna use one of these posts that is in the little kit that is made for like earrings or things like that. But it has this little stopper on the end, but the stopper is still smaller than the hole that is in the quartz bead. So that's why we're gonna use these gold beads. So they sit on there and they don't fall off. And they are going to allow us to put our little bead on here and it won't go through the hole. And then we're going to put one at the top as well. And all we're gonna do is hold all this while I take my pliers and create a little loop that we will be able to use as our hole for our charm. 
to attach it to the chain. Just like that. And now we'll be able to attach that to a chain and we have a little Sorcerer's Stone homemade bead. Now that we have our bottle mostly embellished and we have our little Sorcerer's Stone bead or Philosopher's Stone bead, we are going to take a chain and I just picked up a gold necklace chain so it already had a little lobster claw on it and I'm going to just attach that on there. Now we are going to use this to wrap our handle with the chain so that our little sorcerer's stone dangles off of the handle like that. So to do that, I'm going to use a, just a tiny little bit of hot glue once we get to the top to hold it all into place. But in the meantime, I'm just going to hold the base in place and we are just gonna continue to wrap the chain all the way around. Okay, as you can see, I have my whole handle wrapped and I'll be able to mess with it a little bit once I get it glued. But I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue here and then we're going to flap the rest of the chain over. To lock it into place. Now I would always recommend that you maybe do this with some E6000. So I'm gonna do a combination of the hot glue that is an immediate dry. And I'm also gonna put some E6000 glue on here just in case the hot glue was to come off, say in like extreme temperature changes, the E6000 will not. So I'm gonna do a combination of both, but the hot glue locks it into place. So now I have used some E6000 glue here as well as down here to just lock everything into place. But I love this little detail on the handle. I think it just kind of gives it a little bit of like a chain mail look, but I love how it adds just a little bit more gold to it. And I think it kind of makes it a little, a little bit more period to when um, Nicholas Flamel would have started to potentially use the elixir of life from the Philosopher's Stone. So at this point, I think we're ready to make our actual potion. So we're gonna take the cork out and we're going to add our alcohol. Okay, and I think that's good because I want it to have plenty of room to move around in there to really show off our mica swirls. Then we're gonna add our red food coloring. I'm going to cork this up and give it a good shake. And since my glue is still drying, just make sure that you hold your little sorcerer's stone down here while you shake everything up. Okay, so that's all good and mixed. And now we're gonna add our gold mica powder. And I think I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more. Anytime you're going to go back into your mica powder, make sure you dry off your utensil. And I think that looks great. It just gives this awesome gold fiery look to it. And again, the mica powder will settle to the bottom and we'll be left with our nice vibrant red transparent liquid. And once we shake this up, it'll get rid of any of that up here, but I just thought one minute here, we'll try to get this mica off the side. And before I cork this one, I'm gonna make sure that the top is nice and clean just because I have a light colored rubber cork. And I've had a couple people tell me that their corks tried to pop out on them. And sometimes that's because when you put it in, the cork was wet and the bottle was wet. So it just creates like a automatic like lubrication to make it slip out of the bottle. So just make sure everything is good and dry so that you get a really nice adhesion and then let it sit for a second sometimes after you cork it before you start shaking it up just to make sure that you get a really good stopper in there. And you know, 
push it down really good. Sometimes giving it a little bit of a twist will help lock it in too. And now that cork is in there. So now we can go ahead and wrap the top of our bottle with some of our hemp cording. And we're gonna wrap the top of this like we have several other bottles before. And like I said, you can get instructions on how to do this on page four of my book in the Wizard's Craft Book. Or you can watch some of my past videos. But we're gonna go ahead and wrap all the way up to the gold line and then we're gonna do a separate set of wrapping just above there to kind of complete that off. So then that way that little gold leaf line that we made will stay nice and gold. Okay, so now that we have this wrapped and you can see our beautiful gold foiling there, I'm gonna take a lighter or you could use a match and we're gonna kind of age the twine a little bit. Now, if you're using a jute twine, a lot of times that will have um, a whole lot of the little wispies and this will get rid of those. Now, this hemp cording has a little bit of that, but this will still give it a kind of burnt look to it and just kind of age it up some and I love how that works. Now, this is one of those not supposed to be able to be blown out by the wind lighter so you don't actually see the flame come out of the end, but believe me, it's there. You can hear it and you can kind of see it spark out. Um, but this does a great job of aging our cording. Okay, and I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it on camera, but I can definitely tell in person that it um, just kind of added a little bit of a singe look to it that looks really, really nice and um, just kind of adds to the older vibe of the bottle, which I think is appropriate since Nicholas Flamel is obviously very old. And now we can add our label. So I'm just going to peel the backing paper off of our sticker paper. And I just wanted to point out a couple things on my little label here. So this symbol here is actually the alchemy symbol for the Philosopher's Stone. Um, that's my little cooking and craft chick apothecary stamp here. And then this is another um, alchemy symbol. And then I have uh, what the elixir of life does on the outside edge here. So I just thought that was a nice little touch. And just so you know, it's so, it's so tiny on here, but when it was bigger, you could see there's a little red symbol right here. That's actually Nicolas Flamel's symbol since he was a real person um, in France, lived at the same address that uh, Warner Brothers used in Fantastic Beasts, the whole shebang. Um, so I think it's kind of cool that Nicolas Flamel was based off of a real person. Okay, so we're going to stick our label on here and smooth it out. And as you guys have heard me say several times before, round labels on roundy bottles is difficult, but it is doable. Just start in the center and work your way out. And this one's not too rounded, and I made sure to make it a size that was feasible to fit on our bottle without a whole bunch of air bubbles or creasing. And then just kind of work your way out to the outside edge to make sure that everything is stuck down really well. Okay, perfect. So now that that's on, I'm gonna show you guys something really cool we're gonna do with the top. So we were not done with our gold leafing. So if you saw it sitting back there, that's why. I did a lot of practicing and testing to see what I wanted to do on the top of this and uh, all my testing turned out really well. So we're gonna see how this does. But before I do that, I'm gonna see how my E6000 glue is. Good, much better. All right, so we're gonna actually dip this upside down perfect. I just wanna make sure that the cork was truly in place so that uh, we'll be able to do our next little bit here. But I love the way that that gold just flares up. So I have my hot glue gun here and this is loaded with a red metallic wax hot glue stick. So this is actually like sealing wax. It's not just hot glue, but hot glue would work just as well. So we're going to drip our red wax on the top and let it spill over the sides. And 
And then I'm going to let it dry just a hair. We're going to quickly dunk it in the gold leaf. And obviously hot glue does not take very long to dry. So just let it sit, be patient. And we're going to brush this off and you're gonna see the really cool effect that we get. Okay, so I think we're dry. We're going to take our handy dandy brush here. And we are going to brush the excess off back into my little gold leaf jar here. And if anything is not 100% dry, which actually there's one little section up here that's not, so I'm gonna let that sit for just a second. Okay, while that's doing that, I can definitely brush off these sides. These are dry. But as you can see, we get this really cool like, like molten metal look on the top. Now I am gonna take some of the red and drip it over this, but I wanted a base of this like gold leafed red look. And again, just take your brush and continue to burnish the little gold leafing. So then that way we get that really pretty shimmery effect. And it also exposes just a little bit more of the red too. Here, I don't know if you guys can see, but this corner here has this really great burnished look to it now. Where we just get this really glisteny gold leaf. Okay, so I am going to drip some more red on top of this. Okay, and as you can see, you can kind of manipulate the wax a little bit just because it does drip a lot. So it's important to move slow, take your time. Um, sometimes kind of blowing on it while it's dripping will help too, just so then that way it um, will kind of stop any excess dripping that you may not want. But if it ever drips on an area that you don't want it on, just pull it off. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this up and we will see if we are done with our bottle. And I think that's gonna be it. I thought this would be a really great potion for us to make in honor of the 20th anniversary of the Sorcerer's Stone being released into theaters. I can't believe it's been 20 years, but it has. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, I think this is a super fun one. Wanted to make this one a little bit different than some of our other potions, adding all the things like the gold leafing and some chain, things like that. So there you have it, our Elixir of Life potion. Procured from the Philosopher's Stone, this will make the drinker immortal as long as consumed on the regular basis. This will be a great addition to our potion and prop collection of making along the way. So if you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much.